for the last couple of days, I've had a few questions about the RGB picker. What do the values mean in it? How do you bring it up? And what do we use it for? G'day, how are you going? I'm well, I'm Drew from Gingo Productions, of course. That's why I clicked on the thumbnail, right? Probably not. Anyway, hopefully it's a good thumbnail. It's probably pretty shit, to be honest. Thumbnails definitely aren't my thing, that's for sure. I'm not very good at Photoshop. Don't even get me started on how hard Photoshop is. But I'm here to talk about Photoshop. We're here to talk about DaVinci Resolve, the best software ever made in the world. Okay, so RGB picker. How do we bring it up and how do we use it? If it's not showing, you just little uh, mousey button here showing. Come down here to the arrow, click this, go down to, not dust removal, go to <laughs> qualifier, click on that. So now as you can see, our values still aren't showing up. That's okay. So right click anywhere on the screen, even these darker areas, and then go down to show picker RGB value. Alrighty. So straight away, these little numbers will pop up. But what do these numbers actually mean? To better discuss this, let's bring up our trusty friend, the waveform here, and let's go through it. So let's pick a really bright area in our image. So let's say over here. And as you can see, we have 195201196 RGB, red, green, blue. So if you want those crisp looking whites, as we do, not always, but let's say we do for now, we want to get those numbers as close as possible. That's when the qualifier comes in handy. Once we know we have values, we can easily come across and just do a few little adjustments here. And we can simply we match all our colors up and then come across 199, 200, 197. It's pretty much as good as it's going to get. And then we bring those whites up just a little bit. And as you can see, we're still looking pretty good. 228, 230, 227. So let's look pretty good. And as you can see, our whites are very much white. So I guess you can say you are actually balancing with your waveform with your white. They're not actually balancing with your qualifier. Well, I mean, that is true. But at the same time, you are able to come across and check to make sure those values are as close as possible. You always want to be below 255. Anything above 255, you're actually overexposing that color. And those set of values that are connected to that color are no longer the true representation of that color. So this shot is exactly the same as the previous shot, but I've graded it, but purposely overexposed it and then exported that so we can't bring back that detail and then imported it back in. So let's see how the qualifier works when trying to balance this image. 255, 242, 230. We think those whites are pretty close. All we're going to do is match the green and the blue to the red and we're there. So let's do that. Now, as you can see, 245, 247, and 244. So we pretty much have a quote unquote perfect white balance in terms of the whites. So we haven't touched the blacks and we haven't touched the midtones. But if we were to bring this image up to the previous image we just did, and we can do that by using the split screen. So you come up to here, split screen, click on this, and then you go to neighbor clip. So look at our image here. They both pretty much have the exact same white balance, but because this one has been overexposed, the values are incorrect. And because we were correcting to that overexposed white, we've got an incorrect white balance. So how would we fix this? So let's reset that node. So let's come across and right click reset node or control home or reset your node. Now let's bring up our scopes again. As you can see, those reds are no longer the correct value. I would say this area here would be the perfect place to do your white balance because it's still the white area and it hasn't been overexposed. So all those colors are still retaining the correct balance. So we bring it to the other image again, split screen. So as you can see, our whites are much cleaner than before. We don't have that red tinge about our image and we're much closer to this original image here. Even with our overexposed parts of image, we still have a very clean looking white. So before color correcting your image, just make sure, just have a look at your waveform and just see if you have any overexposure or underexposure. 
And that way you're not going to be trying to color correct something that's overexposed where you're going to get an improper white balance. And if we, if we actually look at it, this one here probably has a better white balance than this one here. I mean, they're pretty close. Ah, they're close enough, whatever. Okay, so let's go back to the values real quick. When I was talking about 255 and not being over, that doesn't mean you have to be at 255. And when it comes to black, don't be under 006. So if we go down here and look at our values, let's take that bad boy off. Don't go under 006 because once you go under 006, you're actually crushing that detail. And as you can see, we zoom right in, you're losing detail in that hair. And it's such great looking hair. You really want to keep that fantastic looking detail. But that doesn't mean that you have to be at the top and that doesn't mean you have to be at the bottom. So when I was at uni, we were taught that to always be at 255 and to always be around 006, but that's actually incorrect. You don't have to be at those values. So I'll show you an example why that's incorrect. So we come across to our secondary or our log wheels and we bring those shadows up. Now we have a much more milkier looking image. And if we bring our gain down, and we've got a completely different look of what we had before. Because we did the same way we did before. So bring that gain up and those blacks down again. We don't have that same milky look we had before. But that's not to say that you shouldn't have those values. That's just a part of color correcting. And what I mean by that is when you get your footage, it is always important to have the correct starting point to white balance your entire images. If you have a correct starting point with all your images, it's going to be so much easier when you start grading. Color correction is about white balancing your image, getting the same in contrast and saturation. Color grading is more about creating that look. So that's why I mean by bringing those shadows up and then bringing that gain down, creating something that's completely different of what we had before. Now, I mean, that's a pretty disgusting look, <laughs> but you know what I mean? You don't have to be at 255 and you don't have to be at 006. They're just a good starting off point. And it's always important to know how to white balance. So I hope that's explained what the RGB qualifier does. It is a very handy little tool. I use it all the time. Those values will help you a lot. If you have two different images and you want them to look identical, then I always use the RGB to really nail down that look let's make this less ugly <laughs> um yeah i hope you've enjoyed this and i hope you enjoyed this terrible looking grade that i'm doing let's do something like that that's a bit interesting isn't it hey what does that look like um it looks like something but it does look great but that doesn't matter anyway again 255006 stay under 255 and stay above 006 and you're going to keep that detail in the white and you're going to keep that detail in the black look if you want to crush your blacks or overexpose your whites that's completely up to you every now and again i probably will crush the blacks a little bit but saying that it's not something i really want to do and something i try to avoid i hope this quick lesson has um helped you a little bit if you like this type of stuff make sure to comment below I did read the comments because that's why I'm making this video. I did get a several comments about it, which is really strange. Like two people in the space of like 12 hours commented the exact same thing. Pretty sure they're working together. Maybe it's a conspiracy. I don't know. I don't want to get into it, but it seems very sus. That's completely fine. I'm all about sus. <laughs> um, that came across really bad. Maybe I'll edit that out. I probably won't. Anyway, have a great day. Thanks for watching and have a great Christmas and have a great New Year's. Thanks very much. Goodbye.